everybody and welcome back. This is Terry again. Um, this is video two in our uh, three-part series from my fifth unboxing from BB Craft. Now, today we're going to try to kind of work with something that was in our um, package uh, last week. And so what I've decided to do, since I've never really done it before, and we had so many of them, is I thought we would take, let me get them, I thought we would take the embossing folders and do something with them. Now, the only thing I've done ahead of time, and I've only done embossing, I think, twice before, um, is I cut some smaller pieces of paper that I thought would fit better. Now, I don't know why these are small and they're not 9 by whatever. They're not 9 wide to fit the full width through our Big Shot, which is what we're going to use um, to do this, which is our die cut machine. Um, I don't know why they don't make these bigger and they're so small, uh, but um, maybe it's kind of hard for the machine to do. I don't know. So let's pick one. This one's a pretty bold pattern. If we were to, um, what I thought we would do, let me say this first, is emboss um, a paper, and then we would um, highlight it by using a brush and using some vintage photo and see how, how well it looks. Then a friend of mine told me that if you mist the paper lightly with water and then emboss it, since it's damp, that it raises up, but you know what I mean, you get a better impression. So I thought we would try that and whichever um, folder we use to try that with, um, we'll do it again without wetting the paper and then we'll compare the two and then that's what we'll do for this video it doesn't need to be very long okay so let's um let's take this pattern to start out with let's do this one i also have some black paper i was curious as to what it would look like um, black paper with um, white hold on with white ink which is picket fence is your white ink well from Ranger anyway um, and this is the ink and not the oxide if you get it now um, you probably will only be able to find the oxide. I think they discontinued discontinued selling the inks. I'm not sure why. So let's take our first one. You know, maybe we should miss the first one and give it a chance to dry while we play around with the second one. How about that? I'm going to hold it off camera because I'm going to miss it towards the floor. Okay, so you can tell it's damp. It's curling up. So let's put it in the folder. Now, let's see. I thought I cut these the right size. I did get one of the folders out. Oh, I forgot about it folding, so they're going to be a smidge long. Now, we're going to use the Big Shot die cut machine, and you don't use the two plates. What is poor Oz? He must be bald by now. <laughs> Little Oz hairs because of the static electricity come off my shirt. Um, you don't use the two clear plates. You only use um, one plate. And then the two pat the the thick one, and then the uh, one for the thin lists, the thin die adapter. Okay, and then you need just a smidge more. So I just have a piece of a Cheerios box, 
and I use it as a shim just to kind of raise it up just a little bit. Now that's what I did the first time. Um, or the second time. The first time it didn't emboss at all and I was trying to figure out what the teal was. So let's put this in here and then we'll put the folder on top. We'll see if that's going to be enough pressure. Looks like it will to emboss it. And embossing raises it up on one side and indents it on the other in case you're wondering what embossing does or is. And um, so we will um, leave Oh, wow. I don't know if you can see that without me even doing anything to it. I think you probably can. That one really worked. I mean, really. Maybe getting it damp is the secret. Let's try it again without getting it damp. I almost don't want to. <laughs> I almost just want to leave the really super good one. Let's bring it back. Put it on there again. That one turned out really well. I, I don't know how well you guys could see it on camera, but um, that embossing turned out really nice. All right, so let's... So those embossing folders from BB Craft really impressed me. Okay, so we'll try this one without getting it damp. Well, I don't know if you can see that. That's the one without getting it damp. We're going to highlight it, don't worry. And that's the one getting it damp. Now, I think the one getting it damp is just a smidge better. I do I do agree. I think it's a little bit better. Um, so let's um, highlight these with a little bit of vintage photo and we'll we'll do part of it. And then I'm curious to see I I'd, I'd like to see what a uh, rusty hinge would look like as well. Now, I really don't want to, I'm not really sure how to do this because it seems like you would ink the part next to it, too. Do you know what I mean? Um, no, the one, the one that was damp is definitely better. Definitely much better, as a matter of fact. Now that I really look at them side by side laying down flat the one that I just barely sprayed with water is I would say 30 percent better at least mm-hmm okay let me tap this on something piece of manila folder here. Make sure we don't make a big blob. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. More ink. A little bit more elbow grease. Oh, well, now that's pretty. It's amazing how it doesn't um, ink the paper underneath. It just inks the part that we embossed. I'm going to do two rows. And then I'll hold it up to the camera. This is the one that we did not get wet. Okay. So we'll do two rows on this one. And we'll do two rows on the other one. Yeah, see, that is inking that, but um, it's catching more on the little curly cues and stuff and making it darker. 
So it is lightly inking the paper, of course. I knew it had to be. So let's link ink all of it in between. Let's just do both rows at once. How about that? Got my sleeve in there. That's all right. My hands are so cold and my arms are cold. It's um, pretty chilly. That's pretty. Okay, so that's what it looks like with ink on it. Let me hold it for a second and let the camera adjust. I can't see what you're seeing because with my reading glasses on, when I look over to the um, laptop that I use with my webcam to record, does that help? Laptop with my webcam. <laughs> All it does make the camera focus go crazy. Um, then uh, to see up close to see what I'm doing. I can't look over at the laptop and see anything clearly. So let's do two rows on here. It's easier to um, highlight it without getting as much on the paper. I can tell you that right now. So my vote is spray it. Just two little spritzes to get it damp and then run it through the embosser. Okay, that's my vote. Now you can put up to a six inch piece wide piece of paper through the big shot. So these are not that big. These are only as big as the embossing folder. So you could put the folder in the middle and leave the edges. Um, I don't know how you would leave space at the top because of the way the folder is. Do you see what I mean? If you have it, there's no place at the top without a pattern for you to push it up into so that you would have a flat area on the top and a flat area on the bottom. You're always going to have embossing all the way to the top. So you could make a border around three sides the best way to do it would be to emboss it with a piece that's the right size and then make a border with a different color piece of paper. That's that's my vote. Now, I am by no means an expert. Um, like I said, this is only about the third time I've ever tried to do embossing. But I definitely can see a difference um, between doing it with the uh, water and without and I think the paper's a little damp the ink is acting differently as well I don't know how the paper could still be damp but the fibers might be more so than what you can feel but I think you'll be able to notice that I'm having to ink it a little bit more to get it up on those raised up areas because they're really raised up I mean, to get it, never mind, you know what I mean. So that's what it looks like on the one that I embossed after I spritzed the paper. This is the original one. So as you can see, this one's up higher, so there's not as much ink on the paper. Since the embossing is higher, I didn't have to um, touch this part of the paper to get this embossed. Look at that. How can I have ink on me all over already? I haven't even done anything. <laughs> I don't know. All right, now let's do the rusty hinge just because I really like the rusty hinge color. I am a fan. So let's do a row with just the rusty hinge, which is a lighter color. Move this up here so I don't get it on my shirt. Rusty hinge is notorious in my book for getting all over you and getting everywhere. It's almost like that lumberjack red. Holy moly. Or the black to get everywhere. 
So we've got that. So there's a lighter color. Let me try it with this one. I'm going to end up getting them mixed up. No, I don't think I am. This one's the one that had the water. Oh, plus it's curled up a little bit. I know you guys were sitting there going, well, Terry, it's curled up from having the water spritzed on it. How can you get them confused? Because I'm a confused person. That's, <laughs> that's why. I'm just confused in general. I live in the land of confusion. All right, so here's a lighter color. And here they are side by side. So you can see that this one is better than this one because this one's lower, so more ink gets on the paper. This one's raised up higher, so less ink gets on the paper. And if you were a little more careful than I was, you might be able to ink. In fact, I'm sure you would be able to ink just the raised up, the the positively embossed section. Now look on the back and you can see, you should be able to see anyway, that this part is indented and this part is raised up and that's what happens when you emboss it. So since this is up, it, you know, this has to get pushed in in order for that to push up. Now you can also use the negative or the opposite. There's a word for it. Not sure what it is. I don't remember. De debossed? No. Hmm. I'm not sure. But you can do that side as well and it will leave a negative. So this one will have ink on the paper itself and less or none in the uh, embossed area. So I'm going to do this one in the middle. I must have had it in there crooked because it looks to me like this one um, the embossing is a little crooked off the top, so I must have, um, well, I guess that's a way you could make a border, isn't it? If you don't put it all the way in, you could leave a border if it was a wider pattern. You could leave a border by only putting the paper in this far. No, that wouldn't work. You could cut the paper off right at the bottom of this embossing area, embossed area, and that would give you um, a border. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with borders, but I'm just trying to think of all the different things we might be wondering about. So let me do this. Even vintage photo was a little tough to... Um, see when you do it with a brush. Now you can definitely see a difference in this side because it's definitely getting down in the... it is debossed as far as I remember into the negative area. We'll call them the negative and the positive positive being the raised up side. Okay. There's one. There's the one we missed it. And here's both of them together. So you can see that in order to get the effect it didn't go down as far in on the one that we uh, used the misting with in order to get the little curly cues. Um, I did make this darker altogether, so it's, I guess that's not really a fair test. 
but um, so that's what we're going to do with that. Um, so let's set this aside. I've got two more cream colored ones. This was just some scraps I had. So why don't we do this? Let's try a couple of the other folders and just see what the pattern looks like before we head on to the black. I'm interested to see this one. And I would also like to see the dandelion one, I think. Mm -hmm. So let's do a dense one and then one that's farther apart. How about that? That'll be a good test. So let's do the dense one first with a denser pattern. Closer together. Less clear space. Okay. Sorry, I think I hit the camera. Crash bang. Whoops. Oh, I didn't miss it, so we won't miss either one. that one. Let's do this one. Now this one's going through a lot easier. This one doesn't feel like it's embossing very much. Maybe it's because the patterns farther apart. Maybe that's why it was so hard to do that one. Yeah, it worked. Okay. So, let's check out our dandelions. Oh, this is nice. This is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is what it looks like before any kind of inking. This one turned out nice even though I didn't uh, mist it. And this is what the dandelion one looks like. I'm trying to tip it so the shadow will show, show you the pattern. Okay, so now let's take... I wonder if it would be better if we took black soot because it's so much darker than the other. Um, let's do vintage photo. I really, with my white shirt, I really don't want to do black soot, to tell you the truth. Kind of afraid. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Gosh, my phone's in the other room, and it's still outrageously loud. Sorry about that. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool. I like that. It's really neat. It looks like um, like one of those where the cubes are all put together and then you look at it and it's like an optical illusion. Okay, so there's that one. And we'll do this one, and then I'll hold them up to the camera, and we'll see the difference between a densely embossed one and then one that's spread farther apart. Well, I can see that you, it picks up the ink a lot easier. Actually, this one went through a lot easier. It didn't emboss very well, to tell you the truth. Let me, let me try this end. It embossed a little better down here. Mm -hmm. It's picking up the ink a lot better. This part must have been up in the fold, maybe. It seemed like it went through there awfully easy. I'm not really sure why, but this end, yes, embossed a lot better. 
So I guess you can somehow have an issue. It's going to ding again. Oops, delayed on the phone. Okay, so let's see the difference between a dense pattern and a wide out pattern. So here's our dense one, our dense pattern. And our open pattern. I really like this one. This one's really cool. Let me turn this around. These dandelions are upside down. So that's the difference. You can see this left a, a lot of clear area or mostly clear area between. This one picks up a lot of the ink. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one, a black one and, and try it with the white. Let me see if I have, oh, I don't know. I have a brush that, yeah, this one looks like I used picket fence on it before. So let's try, let's do this dense one. I really like it. And then we'll ink it in white just to see, and then we'll finish up. Oh, I can just tell you off the bat, it looks pretty cool. Okay, let's get the white. I accidentally hit the black on it once <laughs> a while back. Let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, there you go. Okay, that's interesting. Don't see it as much. I mean, I know black is dark, obviously. This isn't true black. Black soot is not true black. There's the embossed side. Let's try it on the other side too and compare. I believe this is the side I did on the other one. You get two completely th different things with this dense pattern depending on what side you're looking at because even on the quote unquote negative side, um, you've actually got a raised up pattern kind of wild, but it's different. I mean, it's the same pattern, but it's got a different, um, a different layout to it. Okay. So this is what the negative side looks like with the white ink on it. And this is what the embossed side looks like. Now, neither one of them really get glue on there. Really trips my trigger with the white on it, with the black. I think if I was to do the black, I would just leave it black and then use it. Um, it's something like fancy, like a, a frame or something around something. Put a small picture in here or something like that. And then I think that would look very, very nice. I'm not sure that I would ink it because every color is going to look really, really light 
and you're not going to be able to see the contrast because the paper's black and all you're going to see is the, the ink everywhere. You're not going to see the darkness or the darker part of the ink on the raised up part of the paper, I don't think. I think that would be true with any super light colored ink that we tried that you would be able to see against black. Okay, so here's our experiments. Whoops. Uh, the black with the white and the light with the brown. We've got the Oz. We've got the um, wider apart pattern and the closer together pattern. Oz, get away from the door. I could hear the vertical blinds making noise. Then we've got the um, paper that we got damp versus the paper that we didn't. Oops, look at that. Off camera. I'm not used to the, where the new camera is and um, since I can see the brown down here, I know for sure that I bumped it. Um, okay. All right, well, that's going to be it for this video. We're just playing with our embossing folders a little bit. And I will see you in the next video. And that will be just a second for you and a day for me. Okay, bye-bye. Okay.